to celebrating our food and telling stories of it. I am Sophie, your host and producer, and this is Our Food Stories, a podcast for us and by us. Episode 22. Did you know rotting meat is a form of creating flavor? In my newsletter, I always talk about how most of the flavors we grew up with are obtained from drying, smoking, fermenting, and using ash. Today's story is about a delicacy called del, which is a meat that is rotted to acquire a unique, distinct flavor. When I first received this story, I was so fascinated and I had so many questions. Luckily for you and me, special guest Ismail generously walks us through the story of del, how it is made, and the reason for rotting the meat to achieve flavor. Enjoy. My name is Ismail Hassan. I'm actually born in the northern part of Uganda, in Gulu district. Today, I would like to share with you something about a very, very crazy food. <laughs> I'd say it's crazy because it wasn't. It was that kind of food that, in the production phase, we could first we would wish not to eat it. <laughs> but yeah, because slowly, slowly it's disappearing and the knowledge is also vanishing. I thought I should table it down. Uh, there's a diet in the Chile called del del del. Usually, what they do is they they get uh, a fleshy part of. Uh, fleshy part of, uh, of, of, of a cow, let's say, maybe from the, the hump or the head with a leather, with a, with a skin on. They don't remove the skin. My grandmother, this is an experience that I witnessed from my grandmother. They will first bury it, uh, they will first bury it in the ground for some few days as if it starts rotting. And then they will, as they remove it, when they remove it, they smoke it on fire. But that's that stench that comes out of it. Even the whole community will know that you're cooking dill, <laughs> and everyone will literally want to run away because the stench would be so strong. You know the stench of something rotting, and you're putting it on fire. One of the reasons why it would be buried one is to to prevent the meat because it's wanted a little bit. It's wanted in in its uh, natural. Let let's say in its raw form. So the only way you can protect it by either burning. Because in the ground when you bury it, there's a, there's a lot of heat because it's wrapped in a polythene or banana leaves, something like that. Then it's buried underground for like a period of around two to three days. And the other way, the other reason is that uh, one, like I said, it's protected from uh, other stray animals. And two, they also hide it in regards because of the smell. Because if you leave something rotting in the house, you know how, how, uh, how, how that stench would uh, make people run away. So that's the second reason why dill is usually buried or why the meat is always buried. Then, then the other reason is because they want, they want to have a taste of that, uh, that rot. You know, when, when you cook something that is rotten, oh, it's rotting. There's that kind of flavor, sourish, you know, flavor that comes out with. So that's one of the reasons why it's, uh, it's wanted. So it doesn't ferment. It usually rots. Sometimes when it's dug from the ground, you find it with... Um, with maggots and then it has to first be roasted on fire so that that they kill off those pathogens and then the meat uh, the meat remains in its best in its best position you get it interrupting your listening for a little bit did you know that you can send in your food story yes that's right if listening to this podcast has inspired you to relieve some of your favorite food memories, you can send those stories and be part of our food stories. Just send an email to a kitchen in Uganda at gmail.com to get more details. This call is for Ugandans for now, but if you enjoy these stories as much as we have enjoyed bringing them to you, you can leave a testimonial or a rating on your favorite listening platforms. Now back to the story. My grandma would roast it, and uh, after some time, when it's roasted, they'll boil it. Uh, they'll put it in a pot of water, 
put in fire then boil it boil it with a few ingredients in like the tomatoes onions then leave it there then when it's almost near to uh, getting ready they also add in some hibiscus plant uh, popularly known in actually as malakwang they add it to it to give it some sour taste and to complement on the scent but still it doesn't it doesn't remove away the scent so on on top of it if there is a a mix a complement of paste that is peanut and simsim paste they would add on it or rather if there's simsim paste they would actually also add on it to make the soup more thicker and more tastier so um as as they're doing that they also prepare some some uh, some sweet potatoes on the side and they also or probably preferably if there's millet they also prepare some millet bread on the side that would be served to to us because culture is culture you love to you just enjoy because we we used to eat as a group we don't eat as individuals in one plate one food is served on a tray so we eat from the same tray and you know that bond that it creates and harmony that it brings between all of us that was a nice that that was a very very special exceptional experience that uh, that currently is also disappearing because of uh, the nuclear family setup then because of the challenges that the modern world is facing it's also it's also vanishing However, yes, however, this is something that I grew. I think I, I had dill maybe twice or thrice in my entire life. And it's a special meal that was only prepared by my grandmother. And because I, I love being within the kitchen, oftentimes it helped me learn so much more about, about food and um, the connection that they have with it, you know. Mind you, dill is made only on special occasions, only for special people. Other usual foods we could eat, like the pasted uh, green vegetables, or you call it bo, pasted bo, kobe, or maybe okra, okras or tigu always. But yeah, there was also a, there was a special meal that was preferably prepared for for people. You know, the, the knowledge is disappearing. It's unfortunate. It's disappearing because people don't want to associate with uh, with bad stench. They don't want bad smelling things. But they do. They do love food. Yeah, culture is culture. We can't, we can't, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't deny the fact that it's 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 a it's a foundation of our existence. It's a foundation of our roots. But yes, it's one meal that maybe one time I'll demonstrate fully. I love food, by the way. I love food. Every cultural food in every culture has a specific food, a special food that I believe it intrigues one to reminisce with them. For all my experiences. Now, being being among the elderly, especially the women, has helped me to learn a, a diversity of food and what that food means to them. I, I pray and hope that uh, in the near future too, we have so much more engagements as well, so I can I can share so much much more, and I can share um, a diversity of uh, such 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 wisdom. All in all, is that. Uh, now this wisdom is 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 kind of uh, vanishing because with the current elite of uh, young people that have gone to school and those that haven't uh, interest in food that requires a lot of a lot of knowledge people tend to to move away from it it's rare to find it lately i'm glad that i probably with, an, with other other people out there are trying their best to to gather this knowledge and to have this uh, put down you know you're helping a lot in the compilation and helping people understand the different the different diets that uh, makes a particular culture very special thank you ismail for that incredible story a lot of delicacies and indigenous dishes are at a risk of extinction because of various reasons most of which are known to many of us so listening to a story like this gives us a small glimpse into what life was like in the past um an environmentalist uh, by vocation with passion for sustainable agriculture 
biodiversity conservation and also a conservationist in the aspect of the Nilotica Shea Nut Trees Conservation. You can find and connect with Ismail on Twitter under the handle at LoneWalker underscore 256. Remember, if you have a delicious food story that is very dear to your heart and you would like to share it on this podcast, you can reach out to me via email at akitcheninuganda at gmail.com or on Instagram at akitcheninuganda. Don't forget to share the podcast with other listeners, to leave a review or a rating, and to comment on your favorite stories wherever you listen. See you in the next episode.